Hi, I'm Jack Ansel, and welcome to the Embedded News video blog, which is a companion to my free online Embedded News e-newsletter. Today we're going to talk a little bit about naming conventions for variables and functions in embedded firmware. I read an awful lot of code, and I'm constantly astonished at some of the really poor names that people select for their variables and, and functions. And it, ironically, this is often from the same people who believe, absolutely incorrectly, that with long variable names you can have self-documenting code. That's just not the case. However, correct variable names are really important. Why is it that every index variable is named i? Or for nested loops, ii? Or my personal favorite, iii? Well, you know, it goes back to Fortran 60 years ago because with Fortran, variables starting with the letter i were the first of the default integers. And somehow we're still doing that even though it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense anymore. There are some variable names you see which are really baffling. This is from Linux. This is not a contest to see how few characters you can type. And where are the comments? What's the documentation on those parameters? What do they mean? This is awful stuff and whoever wrote this code should be banished from the ranks of programmers. The naming problem was solved in 1735 by Carl Linnaeus when he came up with what is now known as Linnaean taxonomy. He said you start with the very general and work yourself to the more and more specific. So when you name biological entities, for example, you start with the kingdom, plant or animal, and you work yourself way down to more and more specific. The class of creatures that we're members of are of the genus, the general, homo, and the species, specific, sapiens. So we're called homo sapiens. So an example of a name that doesn't correspond to these rules, which we see a lot of, is read timer. It's a terrible name. It's exactly the opposite of what I've just talked about. A much better name would be timer read, timer initialize, timer get. Doing it this way, all of these things are logically grouped together. I believe that with two exceptions, we should not permit any abbreviations or acronyms in our names. They ran a pretty interesting experiment. They had one group of com computer science people abbreviate names. And they had another group of CF people try to expand those abbreviations. They had a 60% success rate. What that tells me is that abbreviating is a form of encryption, which is exactly the opposite of what we want. Remember, in writing software, clarity is our goal. Encryption is not. Now, I said there were two exceptions. The first, of course, is anything that's industry standard. You know, everyone knows that what USB means. And uh, the second exception is anything we define in a data dictionary, perhaps in a header file somewhere. So for example here, MPS means meters per second, and everyone in the project is using exactly the same abbreviation, so it's very clear what this means. When I took my first physics class, I couldn't believe it. The professor taught us to cheat on exams. I had no idea they would do this. He showed that if you could understand the units, without even understanding the physics. You can oftentimes get the correct answer by canceling units and by using the units to um, do the math correctly. And he was certainly correct. You've probably heard of the Mars Climate Observer. That was a spacecraft that was destined for Mars and <laughs> it got there. It, got, it smacked right into the surface of the planet. It was supposed to go into orbit. The problem was that the units used in the software for the ground support equipment were different from the units used in the spacecraft itself. They mixed up metric and imperial units, a real boneheaded problem. What this says to me is that any variable or function that has some sort of physical parameters associated with it should have the units suffixed to it. So for example, timer, what, what is this in? Is this in ticks, microseconds, milliseconds, weeks? I, I don't know. But if you suffix it with, in this case, microseconds, it's absolutely clear. Or descent rate, is that meters per second, centimeters per second, furlongs per fortnight? I don't know. If we attach this MPS suffix, which we've defined in our data dictionary to mean meters per second, then everyone knows exactly what's in this variable and its chances of screwing things up go way down. I poked a little fun at index variables, but in truth, I think it is reasonable to use very short names for index variables as long as they have a very short scope. They're only used over a few lines of code. So if, if, you're, if you have a loop that 
spans maybe four or five lines of code, sure, go ahead and use IJK, that's fine. But if the loop is bigger than that, then go ahead and use a much more descriptive name. What about camel case? Or using underscores to separate words in a name. What's the correct thing to do? I personally don't think it makes any difference. Uh, my personal preference is to use underscores. It's a little bit more like English, where we use spaces to separate names. I think it's slightly more readable. But I think either way is fine. You just make a rule and stick to it. Camel case suffers a little bit when we're talking about, say, constants or macros that might be defined with all uppercase characters. Uh, that becomes a little bit more problematic. But the bottom line is it just doesn't make a difference as long as you all follow the same rules and everyone on the team is doing it the same way. How about Hungarian? Hungarian notation is where we prefix a variable with a, a letter or two or three that indicate the type of the variable. And uh, this was all the rage for some time. Uh, I think that it is in general a mistake. I think it reduces readability. The MISRA rules, MISRA of course is a standard which is becoming more and more popular in the firmware world. The MISRA rules very wisely prohibit us from using base types because, for example, int. What's an int? <laughs> Nobody knows. It depends upon the compiler, the CPU, and the wind direction. And we build these fabulously complex systems based upon these really unknown uh, identities. Uh, Misery doesn't say how we should define our types. They recommend, though, that we use the POSIX standards. So, for example, uint 16 underscore t would mean an unsigned 16-bit integer, which I think is a pretty good way of doing things, but it makes it fairly difficult to use Hungarian with such a long type name. Some people will, would put u16, um, but I think because the IDEs are so good today that it's not really necessary. When you hover over a variable inside your IDE, it will usually tell you what the type of the variable is. But maybe you better prefix global variables with something really horrible and nasty just to indicate to everybody else that this is a global and to discourage people from actually using globals because they are so dangerous. I mean, realistically, perhaps a prefix of G underscore or global underscore would make an awful lot of sense. Yeah, it makes a variable a bit harder to use. That's a good thing because globals are so dangerous. Uh, but that's the same reason they painted dynamite red to warn people that this is a dangerous commodity. We're looking for readability over brevity. So active window is much preferable to act win. Act win may be, make perfect sense to you today, but in two or three years, when someone else is maintaining this code, it may not be as obvious to people. Oftentimes we have legacy code or we inherit a code which is a mess. The names are just a disaster. Uh, no one has time to go in and fix them all. It, it would be wonderful if we could, but it's just not possible. I think it better it makes sense to draw a metaphorical line in the sand where we say, from now on, going forward, we're going to do things the right way. We'll use meaningful, well thought out variable names, and yeah, we'll continue to deal with the old mess because that's just the way it is. The old people who did it this way, they were amateurs, but as professional developers, we should use the best possible practices going forward, recognizing that we can't fix all the old sins. So that's my take on variable and function names. I think getting them right is really important, and I think it makes sense to put just a bit of thought into them. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to go to Gansel.com for plenty more videos and over a thousand articles on better ways of building embedded systems.